In this video, we're going to take a look at what the period and the amplitude are and how they affect the sine and the cosine graph and where they're located actually in the equation itself. So the period is the length of the interval of the domain over which a graph repeats itself. That means how far or what's the distance that the graph needs to repeat that piece that we're looking at. Now, in terms of transformations, the period is actually the horizontal trigonometric term to indicate a horizontal stretch. Now, if you recall, this is by a factor of 1 over the absolute value of b, because we're going to ignore right now any reflections. Now, whenever you're graphing any trig function, whether sine, cos, or tan, I want you to always keep in the back of your mind what the basic function looks like. So I'm going to draw this over here. So the basic function for sine, if you recall, is this right here. And this is at 0, this is at pi, and this is at 2 pi. It has a max of 1, and then it has a minimum of negative 1. So this is the shape that we're going to try to draw when we draw the sine graph. So when we take a look at this graph here, compared to y equals sine theta, there is this number here, which is a half. So this half is our horizontal expansion by 2. Remember, it's an expansion because we need to flip it. So if our normal period is 2 pi, if I expand it by 2, now the new period will be 4 pi. All right, so we're going to graph this as pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. So what I recommend that you do is you start off with graphing 0, and that will stay at 0 when we stretch. Then we're going to graph the last point. So instead of 2 pi, we're going to graph the period at 4 pi, which is way over here. Then we're going to graph the middle point, which is at pi. So our middle point now, instead of at pi, the half of the distance between 0 and 4 pi is 2 pi. So if you notice, what I'm doing is I'm going to start with my first point, I graph my last point, and then I'm going to keep taking halves. So half of 0 to 4 pi is 2 pi. I'm going to graph my max, which is in between 0 and pi, which you'll notice is at 2 pi. So half of 0 and 2 pi is now pi. So I'm going to graph my max over here, which is at 1. And then I'm going to graph my minimum, which is this low point on my basic graph, which is going to be at 3 pi over 2, between pi and 2 pi. Now in my stretch graph, the halfway point between 2 pi and 4 pi is now 3 pi. We're going to graph that as our minimum down here. Now remember, don't draw a zigzag graph, but we're going to draw a nice curve that goes through these five points. Now, I want you to try the sine 2 theta and the cos 1 fifth theta by yourself. So we're going to take a look at cos 5 theta. So cos 5 theta, remember, let's keep in the back of your mind again what the cos graph looks like. And that starts right up here, remember? Oops, sorry. <clears throat> Comes down and then goes back up. So this is zero. Our low point here is pi. And then our high point here is two pi. This again occurs at one and negative one. All right, so the five here, this time we have a horizontal compression by one fifth. So if you recall, our original period was two pi. So if we compress that by one fifth, our new period will now be one fifth of two pi. So we our period, our new period will be two pi divided by five. <coughs> so how do we graph that? Okay, so we're gonna place zero here. And to make it look nice, we're going to put 2 pi over 5 over here. And we're going to graph our first point, which is at 0, 1. And this will still be at 0, 1 because we haven't had any vertical stretching. Then we're going to graph our last point. Now notice our last point is at the same height 
is the same maximum as what we started with. Now our period now is 2 pi over 5. So this is 2 pi over 5 here. Our same value, it should have the same maximum value as what we started. So halfway between 0 and 2 pi is our low point, our minimum. So halfway between 0 and 2 pi over 5 will be this point here, which is now pi over 5. And we're going to graph that at negative 1, which is down here. So basically, we're taking this graph, and we're actually just plotting on here. But we have to relabel our x values with different uh, x values with a different period because the period has changed. So our middle point here is on the x-axis, and it's halfway between our max and min. So halfway between our max and min, since this is 0 and pi over 5, this will now be pi over 10. Now this will now help us count. If we skip count, this will give us this point right over here. And this is this last, the fourth point in our cosine graph. And this point, the x value, is halfway between pi and 2 pi. So halfway between pi over 5 and 2 pi over 5, if we skip count, we have 1 pi over 10, 2 pi over 10, so this has to be 3 pi over 10. Which so now I'm going to plot a point there. Now don't draw a V because the cosine graph is not a V, but it has to be a nice curve that looks something like this. All right, <clears throat> so this is the period. So to summarize, um, the B represents our period. And the period is going to be 2 pi divided by B. Now if you noticed, when the B value was a fraction, or specifically, the B value was between 0 and 1, we got a horizontal expansion. But then when the B value was greater than 1, we got a horizontal compression. Now, one more thing is if the B is negative, we're also going to have a reflection, or we're going to reflect the graph over the y-axis. Now, we're actually not going to see that very often this year, at least not in pre-calculus 12 here. All right, so next we have the amplitude. Now, the amplitude is half the distance between the maximum and the minimum values. So recall that a function of the form y equals a times f of x is related to y equals f of x by a vertical stretch of a factor of a, absolute a, above the x-axis. This transformation also applies to the sine and cosine functions. Now, if a is less than 0, we're also going to say that the function is also reflected in the x-axis. All right, so let's take a look. So we have here um, y equals 2 sine theta. So remember, again, we're going to draw our basic sine graph. So it goes from 0 through pi to 2 pi of max of 1 and a minimum of negative 1. So we haven't, we, I didn't actually add any other um, stretching, so we don't have a b value. So we know that the period is still going to be 2 pi. Now the amplitude, because it's now stretched vertically by 2, we say that the amplitude is 2. Now when I graph this, I'm going to start at 0 to graph that first point. Graph my last point, which we'll put over here conveniently, at 2 pi. So this will be at pi, this is going to be pi over 2, and this will be 3 pi over 2. Graph our middle point, which is also on the x-axis. So notice this is actually really nice. All of the three points on the sine graph are all on our central axis, which is, happens to be our x-axis. Now we're going to graph our max now, which is in between the first and the third point. So that would be here at pi over 2. But instead of putting it at 1, we're now going to place that at 2 because our amplitude has now 
vertically stretched by two. And then similarly, this fourth point, one, two, three, four, instead of at negative one, we're now gonna plot that at negative two, since it's vertically stretched. So let's connect our five points. Make sure to draw a nice smooth curve that goes through all five of your points. All right, let's do uh, one more. Uh, let's do the negative three sine theta. Actually, you know what? Yes, we'll do the negative three sine theta. So the amplitude is a positive value. So the value here is three. We're gonna ignore the negative sign and say the amplitude is three. There is no B value, so the period is still two pi. So what happens is we're still going to use our basic graph to guide us. And we know that we start off with zero, plot our two pi, our last point, plot our middle point at pi. Now our amplitude is three, so we want to graph the highest point at three and the lowest point at negative three. Now, however, we do need to take consideration that there is a negative here, which means that we need to reflect over the x-axis. <clears throat> so having this blue graph here, we're now going to draw something that is reflected, and it will look like this red graph here. So instead of at pi over 2, we're not going to plot a point at 3, but we're actually going to plot a point at negative 3. And then at 3 pi over 2, we're going to plot a point at positive 3. So this gives us this nice curve that looks like this. All right, so to summarize, the A determines something called the amplitude. And if A is between 0 and 1, we get a vertical compression. If A is bigger than 1, we get a vertical expansion. And then recall that if A is negative, we will be doing some reflection. So we're going to reflect the graph over the theta axis. And this actually will happen quite a bit. So you will see this quite often. Now, one more thing uh, to summarize is that we can calculate the amplitude if it does move around. And we will be vertically displacing our graph later. We can take the maximum value. And then we minus our minimum value. And then we divide it by 2. We will get the amplitude.